Okay, we're on. So I wanted to uh, say a few things to you people who are Muslims. And I've been charged with telling any of you guys that'll listen. So, here's my testimony. And I'm going to mention my son's testimony. But, all in all, this is about Jesus, Yeshua. That's what the Hebrew people call him. So, Gabriel is the angel that stands in the presence of the Lord. Gabriel is the one who gave Mary the name of Christ, the name of the Messiah, to name him. You know, until after, you know, the story you can read in the Gospels. Now, I have to tell you the truth. You see, what I learned is, is supposedly Muhammad was in a cave for 23 years, and it supposedly was the cave of treasures. I don't know if that's true of those things, but I do know that supposedly for 23 years that Gabriel ministered to him, and basically, in essence, the uh, message is, is God has no son. God has no son, which is a lie, and I tell you it's a lie, because I know that that is a lie, and I will tell you this, when I got baptized, okay, repented of my sins, turned away from sinful ways and stuff, I was driving down the road, I was on I-75, and I was thinking about this the Bible scripture that says when he's on the cross he says Father take my spirit so when that happened I was literally like pulled right out of my car and then I was placed like back in time and I watched I watched Yeshua say this I watched it come right out of his mouth and then he passed and then his spirit shot up and then it come back down through, to the, through the crack. So, I don't know what that meant, but at that time, but now, I do. So, what happened later in my life son, I was at work and I was praying really hard, I was just overwhelmed, and I was weeping, and I was begging, begging, I guess you could say, like begging for scraps from the table, but I was begging that the Lord to save my children, save my son, and uh, I actually went and visited him two days later and he says to me dad you know what happened I was listening to the book of revelations and I just had my eyes closed <clears throat> and this arm reached through like a veil just reached through and said come with me and he said I tested the spirit asked him if Jesus came in the flesh and the spirit laughed and said, yeah, come, come, let's go, and he took him to heaven, and it was Gabriel, and my son got to eat some fruit off a tree, and he was in heaven, There's a bunch of angels around him, and some of them were really big, like 15, 20 feet, some of them were little, and, uh, I wanted to tell you, Jesus came, and when Jesus came, my son had to instantly bow. He couldn't look up at him, look up at his face or anything, but he could see the holes in his feet, and they were all talking, and told him many things that he's not allowed to 
to uh, speak about, but the things that he did tell me is um, for him to share, but I wanted to tell you those two testimonies, I'm telling you Muslims, God has a son, God has a son, you know, your word contradicts itself and it's not even a word. I could get into the technicalities of historical natures and stuff, but it's not it because it's not by force that you would get a revelation, but it's by the Spirit. And then you would know that the Spirit was made flesh. God came in the flesh. God as a son was predestined, preordained. You look at the order of Melchizedek, you know, priest, you know, priest of Salem forever. And that's Jesus, that's that's Yeshua. You see that at the right hand. The book of uh, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, in the beginning, when you break it down in the Hebraic pictorial and you read, you know, correctly, from the right, from the left, it literally says, this is the home of the God-man who's seated at the right hand of power who will go to the cross basically is what it says and that was written in Hebraic pictograph and transliterated for us now and the Lord said he sent Samuel I believe second Samuel that he would uh, write the end from the beginning and I mean I think that's pretty substantial but I tell you the truth Muslims Jesus Christ Yeshua Hamashiach you know the son of God it's only, it's, it doesn't come by force. If you want to know the truth, God's not going to deny you truth. You're going to get it, and he's going to reveal it to you. So, I want to just share that with you people, because the end is near. I'm not going to go into all these details, but I pray that the Lord pours his spirit about on anybody that hears this message and that he blesses them that they would receive his spirit and then you would know all these things and another thing is is <laughs> NASA's a lie it's such a lie and they've wasted so much money just programming people and they got everybody in this I don't know it's like this blind like a curtains over their eyes they can't see that a cup of water is flat and they think that this place is spinning around all crazy with the molten core. But the oceans, they're not boiling. <laughs> oh, it's so deep. Okay, the oceans aren't boiling. And there's no curve over water whatsoever. Like none. And when you go up on the horizon, the horizon does not change. It doesn't bend. It doesn't bow. None of that. But they say that it bends and bows at a low altitude, standing at a sea, you know, the shore of some sort of a lake or whatever, and the boat disappears in this supposed horizon. I'm, you know, I'm very sad that people are so duped by this, and it's real puzzling, but it's no mystery because the word NASA is actually off of the Hebrew language. And uh, it basically means to deceive, you know, feathery serpent, illuminated deceiver, whatever. I mean, it's so funny that that symbol has a snake's tongue, too. So, I mean, they're like, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, I've just prayed for the truth. And I have to let you guys know that this is what it is. But this message is mainly for the Mo Muslims of the world. You know, because we're all children of God. And he wants you to know that it's the truth. And he did put on flesh. And he come down here and dwelt among us. And his people killed him. But he rose from the dead because he didn't do no sin. And the wages of sin is death. So, the wages of sin is death. And he didn't sin. So those who call upon his name, you know, he's not going to deny you, and that spirit that hovered above the waters, across the waters in Genesis, is the same spirit that rose from the dead, and that spirit is promised to those who, uh, you know, 
seek him while he may be still be found. So, you take care.